In this lesson, we'll be creating a probe operation. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a probe operation and use probe to modify a G55 coordinate system location. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's talk about creating probe operations and how we can use those to set our G location of our part. So this is a little bit of a tricky subject because probe functionality differs from machine to machine. So we're going to be talking about this in a very general sense, and the application of it based on your machine might require some different settings or some different options. The first thing that we want to do is we want to just create a probing operation. Then we'll go back and we'll talk about the settings. So under the setup dropdown, we're going to select probe, and the first thing we need to do is select a tool. We're going to filter the tool type by probe, and then we're going to go into our samples library and notice that we have several different probing options. I'm going to select tool number three and say OK. Notice in this instance that the feed rate comes in at zero, so I'm going to increase this to 30 inches per minute, so that way there's a parameter there and we don't get a warning. In the geometry section, we have the option to select model or stock. We're going to be using model. And then we have the option to select a surface or an edge. We can also select a point. In the probe type, it stays at unspecified until we make a selection. If we want to select and find the XY location of this boss, we can either select the side surface of the cylinder and notice that we get a preview on the screen, or we can select the bottom face. This will give us the same variables, in this case, XY circular hole with island, XY circular hole or Z surface when we select the bottom. And if we select the side, we'll get the two options, XY circular hole with island and XY circular hole. These differ based on their approach. If it thinks there's an island, it'll keep the tool high, move over, and then come down. However, we know that this is open, so we'll just use the circular boss option. When we hover the cursor over some of the parameters, notice that instantly we get an error telling us that it's not possible with the distance specified. We're going to reduce this mount to 0.1, hover the cursor there, and notice that the warning has disappeared. We have a height section, which allows us to set up our clearance, retract, and bottom height. And notice that this is the probing surface top, and there's also an offset in here. And then we have a fourth tab for settings for the WCS. We'll come back to these. First, we want to take a look at a probing operation. And in this case, we've created our probe operation. And we want to post this and see what the code looks like. So I'm going to post it using my Haas pre-NGC. Post the code. And since I already have a 10,100, I'm going to just overwrite that. And notice in here that we now have some probing codes. Inside of here, it's referencing G54. It's got some parameters for Z and setting the height. And then all of these P codes that we see, P9832, 9810, 9814, these are the values that are calling and setting the probe information. So it's moving around and it's looking for a trigger. When it has a trigger, it'll then populate the information that it finds back to the controller. So once we hop back out of here, you know there's an M code, there's some additional code that's relating to the machine and ending the program. But this is the section that's focusing on the probe itself. So from here, how do we use this information to help us set up our G coordinate system, G54, G55, and so on? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify the setup and go to our post-process section and manually set up our WCS offset. The WCS offset we place here, in this case a number 2, which represents G55, is going to be the basis of all of our toolpaths. So when it's running on your machine, it's going to be referencing G55 for its coordinate system. However, for the probe, we're going to edit this, go to our settings, and we're going to manually set this to number 1, which is G54. So what this does is the probe itself is referencing a G54 coordinate system. The G55, which is referencing the program coordinate system, is going to be set by our probe operation. So let's take a look at the code and see what's different. Once we post the code, 
we can take a look at the code and notice that again we're dealing with G54 specifically for the probe, but we don't have any other operations in here. Without another operation, we won't be able to tell what G code the toolpaths will be referencing. So let's come in here real quick and do a 2D adaptive clearing on this face, and we'll say OK. So now that we have an operation, we'll select the entire setup, once again post the code, overwrite the NC file that's already saved, and now take a look at the code. So our probe is referencing G54, and if we take a look at our toolpath, it's referencing G55. So what this does is it allows you to set G54 in your machine based on the location of a fixed jaw, for example. And then when you set up stock in there, you can use the probe operation to find the center of stock or a coordinate on stock and set that as G55 that you can then use to relate all of your toolpath motions to. So again, this is going to be very much machine and functionality specific. So this is just a general look at how we can use probes to set up a coordinate system and override a WCS. The one thing to keep in mind is that the WCS that the probe toolpath references is going to be different than the WCS that your toolpaths reference. It won't be able to reset its own coordinate system, so you will have to use a different G value in order to program and get that probe to move, and then it can set a G55, a G56, or so on. From here, we don't need these operations, but I want to save my file. Then I'm going to come back and delete my 2D adaptive and delete my probe operation, go back into my setup, and manually set this back to zero, which will be G54. Then I'm going to save it one more time. That way, if I ever need to go back to that version for some reason, I'll have it saved in there. But once your file is saved, go ahead and move on to the next step.